Hey, what's up? Thanks for tuning in to Action Media Reviews. There's a couple things that I want to go over today. Just some stuff that's been on my mind, things that I see in the uh, the toy market that are really starting to get under my skin. Um, first off, it's it, this is not going to be a, a, a complaining or a, a, a bitch and moan video about distribution or whatever, but Hasbro's distribution for things like G.I. Joe is absolutely abysmal. Um, I don't know if they're mishandling the brand or, or what the hell they're doing. They keep showing us all these reveals. This year, uh, this year alone is the 40th anniversary of the Real American Hero line. Uh, first came out in 82 with the three and three quarter inch figures. 40th anniversary, you would think that they would just be cranking out product, anniversary product, anniversary themed product. We got nothing, nothing. There's there's literally like a, a couple of new figures that we have gotten in 2022. Everything else is a pre-order that's 12, 18 months down the road. Uh, the Fortnite Snake Eyes that we all pre-ordered on Hasbro Pulse, it's a Pulse exclusive. That thing is delayed so much that it's going to be almost two years before it comes out, before people have it in hand. Um, at least it's what it seems like. At least a year? I don't remember the exact day that we ordered that. But I, they say the reason why things are taking so long is because they want to make sure that they have enough for everybody, that everybody uh, gets something in hand. And I... for. For the life of me, I do not believe that that's the main reason. I think that um, right now, what they're dealing with is production issues in China, uh, shipping issues, the rising cost of uh, fuel, plastics, etc. Uh, that's just like the uh, let's go green and go windowless packaging. Wave 10 will be the last wave of figures. Dusty, Zorana, and uh, the mm, Crimson Guard, I think is that wave. Wave 10 of the G.I. Joe Classified line. That's going to be the last round of packaging that looks like this. Then they'll go to windowless packaging. So, windowless packaging is something that none of us collectors really want. Uh, especially those of us who use the boxes for display, because we do like to see the figures, at least I do. And with those new, uh, those new windowless displays, it's just all cardboard and you can't see the figure inside. Uh, one of the, one of the biggest concerns I see people talking about is figure swapping, especially with like Marvel Legends, uh, and, and other six inch lines, Marvel Legends gets swapped all the time. People will swap out an older figure or a diff from a different line entirely for a, a figure that they want. And if, uh, if they're going with windowless packaging, you can't even see that. The only thing you would be able to do is inspect the tape or maybe even just pop it open in the store to make sure the figure that you're buying is in the box. I don't want to see these go to a windowless box. It's what's going to happen, but I don't want to see that happen. They've already they've already done that with the Viper 3 pack. And while it's a cool looking box with nice artwork and everything, I want to see the figures. Uh I am working on something uh for that for Marvel Legends and for the uh the GI Joe classified line that goes along with the clamshell displays back here. I do have a clamshell display coming out for six inch figures, but that's that's a little bit down the road, maybe a month or two before I actually get that out to market. Uh, that'll be available in my eBay store and I'll probably sell some on Facebook. Price point will be comparable to these. But back to the issue at hand. Uh, what we see with Hasbro's distribution it's all over the place. Uh, with GI Joes, I was previously able to order some figures uh, in the Asian market, uh, buying specifically from a friend of mine in Hong Kong that was helping me get some figures ahead of time. Uh, they would release there before they actually released them here in the States. And I was able to uh, secure some of those figures but now, like with the uh, the new Target exclusive, Tiger Force and Python Patrol, those are popping up in Europe, 
I think I saw a couple in Canada, whatever, uh, the new wave eight storm shadow spirit and, uh, the Cobra officer. Those are popping up in Canada of all places. First Canada never gets anything first props to them. I'm glad that those guys up there are actually getting something before we do, but come on Hasbro. Geez, you know, you've, you've, you've talked about, uh, all this product that you're going to release in 2022 and with this, especially with it being the 40th anniversary, come on, you've got the retro line that we've been sitting and waiting and waiting and waiting for the, uh, the officer and trooper two pack that, that was supposed to come out sometime soon. That's another pulse exclusive two pack. You know, we, uh, we all ordered that and still we just sit and wait and wait. This is unfortunately how things have, uh, have come to be with collecting action figures. Now, the vast majority of people who are buying GI Joe action figures are adult collectors aged 30 to 50. It's that age range that are buying these figures. And one of the things that really gets under my skin is whenever they will do a hat, they'll do a, uh, a live stream video or whatever. And it's, it's Emily and the team. They want to talk about, <laughs> or the, they, they flash this big thing. It's like parents click here to order. Now parents, are <laughs> parents as if parents are buying these for their kids. Parents are not clicking on this link to pre-order product for their children. Kids aren't even playing with these. The The majority of children want nothing to do with these. They don't know what they are. First off, there's no media support whatsoever. There's uh, no classified-oriented cartoon. There's no classified-oriented comic book. There's no classified-oriented web series. There's no media at all. A really shitty video game. There's no media at all to support these figures. It's all relying on these 30 to 50 year old men. That is the vast majority of people who are collecting this product. Men in their 30s to 40s. And they, they want to act like they're marketing these to kids. Why? What is the point of that? Why not just acknowledge your fan base for what it is? And market to them. You could release every single one of these figures as a Pulse exclusive, and we'd buy them. we buy the shit out of them. If you release them as a Pulse exclusive. We, you, you walk into a retail store. There have been rare instances where retail stores have had a ton of G.I. Joes. You have small independent retailers who carry these. I do everything online. But I still order cases and cases of them, but I sell them online. I don't have a brick and mortar store that I'm going to display these in. Some other guys do, and they have a decent selection of older stock because we can't get anything new. Everything's stuck wherever in limbo waiting to come to the United States, I guess. But retail stores, Walmart, they don't carry these for shit. You've got a bunch of the... Uh, the the movie figures, the Snake Eyes origin movie figures, that wretched failure of a movie that still to this day has not even broke even on the uh, the eighty eight million dollar investment that was made to to uh, to bring that movie out, and it's 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 not GI Joe, it's almost like they took a uh, a stock script from somebody. And just applied some G.I. Joe names and whatnot to it. And said, oh, here's the G.I. Joe. Here's your product. We don't want that. The poster looked cool. The figures are all right. But they're sitting on pegs. Taking up space. The, uh, the one to two pegs that Walmart or Target has for these figures. That space is taken up by movie figures that aren't selling. Because, hey, guess who doesn't want them? kids you're trying to market to kids kids don't want these figures kids don't really care or know anything about it or want anything to do with it um again 30 to 50 year old men are the ones you're you're marketing to but you're acting like you're marketing to children now granted some of these 30 to 50 year old men do act like children <laughs> if you're in any of the online communities you'll see that a lot of them really do act like kids but um 
it just, for some reason, whenever I see parents click here to pre-order now, there's, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, I would bet you almost anything. There are no parents who are clicking that link to order specifically for their kids. If their kids are into them, it's not because their kids just naturally liked these figures because of Hasbro's genius marketing. If kids are into these, it's because their parents are into them. And chances are those kids are really only into them to try and have something to connect their parent with. That's sad to say. It sucks, but it's an unfortunate truth. That's just where we are. Back during G.I. Joe's 50th anniversary, you had all kinds of products like this. These are some of the absolute best figures that Hasbro released for the modern G.I. Joe line, the 50th anniversary series of figures. These and the 30th anniversary series of figures. But the 50th anniversary was awesome. 50th anniversary being the G.I. Joe brand anniversary coming out in 1964. The 50th anniversary figures were awesome. Even the, uh, get this, even the O-Face Duke that you see here, check him out. The O-Face Duke that they re-released as a retro figure. I guess going back to 2014 is uh, retro. And it's not even that far. But uh, speaking of anniversaries, we have the 60th anniversary of the G.I. Joe brand coming up. Guess what we've heard absolutely nothing about? We've heard nothing about the 60th anniversary of G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe came out in 1964. 2024, uh, what, a year and a half from now, will be the 60th anniversary of the brand. They're not even doing anything for the 40th anniversary. Do they just not give a shit about the brand at all? I mean, obviously... They do. Obviously, they're making money on it. We've got almost 50 of the classified figures out so far. But it, it just seems like they constantly fall short of hitting the, uh, hitting the mark on some of that stuff. They either re talk about releasing awesome figures. They'll show us 3D renders. They'll show uh, digital renders of figures that they're, they're coming out with. Where they'll show us the figure, and then it's like, these will be up for pre-order in some time in the near future. Be sure to tune in at 11 o'clock in the morning, whenever, so that you can pre-order these when they go live. And then you look at the release date, and that pre-order is not going to be fulfilled. It's not expected to be fulfilled until like 12 to 18 months later. So we're sitting on these. Remember, kids, be sure to have your parents order this toy that doesn't come out for a year and a half. <laughs> it's it, it it cracks me up. It's I don't know if, if I should be insulted that they act like they're marketing these to kids, or if uh, if I should just laugh because I mean, there's there's really nothing else that I can do, right? I mean, you know, our the stuff that we collect is sitting wherever. We're taking forever to manufacture in uh, in Asia. But as far as manufacturing issues in China go, right now we have Shanghai and Beijing that are on a complete uh, zero COVID lockdown. There's people that are starving to death in their homes because they're literally not allowed to leave. Or they'll be arrested. Uh, people in apartments where they are <laughs> the white suits, the, uh, the, the sanitation guys are are barricading entire communities into apartment complexes and uh, little communities to keep them from coming out. And it's all because of, uh, of COVID, of COVID being so bad there. Uh, now, uh, we do know that China is a very authoritarian communist regime, the uh, complete opposite of America. Personally, I would be more than thrilled to pay more for figures like this. Let's keep that plastic packaging. I'd be more than thrilled to pay more at retail for figures like this if they were made in America. You know, they're raising prices on all of this stuff. Um, we've seen a couple of price increases already. When these first came out, they were $19.99 each. Usually, 
You could find them at uh, at Walmart and Target uh, for a better sale price than nineteen ninety nine. Nineteen ninety nine was MSRP. Uh, usually they were seventeen to eighteen, seventeen ninety nine to eighteen ninety nine. Uh, depending on where you were, but then they raised the price a couple bucks. They raised the price to twenty two ninety nine, and when they raised the price to twenty two ninety nine, you had a ton of consumers out there. They're like, "Oh, well, we should still get them at the old retail price." That's not how it works. Walmart will sell out their stock that they have, um, that they paid that much for. They'll sell it out at that retail price, and then uh, everything coming in after that will be at the new retail price well then again they've raised these a second time to 24.99 retail 24.99 plus tax you're at almost 30 dollars for one of these figures and there's going to be another price increase later in the year it's going to cost almost 30 bucks before tax, almost $30. It'll be $28.99, I believe, is the retail price for a basic G.I. Joe or Marvel Legends action figure. A uh, six-inch action figure. And there are plenty of complaints that people have and have had about the accessories that they come with, the packaging, etc. But, um, you know, $28.99, it's going to be a hard sell for a lot of, a lot of people. Uh, especially, again, with the rising costs of fuel, resources, food, and the uh, the rampant inflation that we are experiencing in the United States. But um, yeah, Hasbro should just sell these for what they are. They're adult collectibles. They're nothing less. Make them Pulse exclusives. Keep the packaging that we want to go with. Keep the packaging that we like. And uh, yeah, maybe seek out some American manufacturing. I've got a uh, right up, like literally two, a mile and a half, two miles, like maybe a mile and a half from my house. I have a plastic injection molding factory that does nothing but plastic injection molding. There's plenty of places like that all over the United States, and they are perfectly capable of manufacturing G.I. Joe style action figures. They're perfectly capable of manufacturing this action figure with these paint apps and this packaging. The expensive part is molds. Molds in the United States are, for some reason, inhibitively expensive to have produced. They're extremely expensive. Uh, injection molds in Asia are much, much cheaper because they have a uh, they have a lack of <laughs> um, they don't have OSHA and they don't have the EPA. So they can skirt around a whole lot of things that we can't skirt around here in the United States. Um, one of the things in a lot of the factories in China that do plastic injection molding, these people who design and make the molds, they are not uh, degreed or certified machinists as we would view them here. Uh, these are people who take on an apprenticeship and they learn how to make molds from whoever taught them in their ways. It's not a standardized way across the board. So uh, some of these factories, it, things, things get a little wonky and molds from one factory may not work in another factory. But we could very easily uh, have figures like this manufactured in the United States. And they just still choose to do business with China. And... Um, Honestly, we shouldn't. We should not do business with China for a multitude of reasons. And it seems as though we are becoming more and more dependent upon Chinese manufacturing. And it's hurting us. It is hurting our businesses. It is hurting our way of life. And now that's part of the reason why we see shortages of things on the shelf not just toys, but a lot of other things. But anyway, I just wanted to have a moment to rant and share some thoughts with you all. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, 
interact, check out the description for links to my uh, my Teespring store where you can buy Action Media Reviews merchandise and to the Facebook groups and to my uh, my eBay store where you can find all kinds of things for sale, including the uh, the clamshell displays that I, I have out there for loose figures. All right, guys. See you next time. Yo, Joe.